Hey there, so today I want to talk about how to comp yourself on autumn leaves when you're playing the melody. Some of you are going, hey, wait, you've already talked about this before, which is true. But I want to touch on a different concept that I haven't talked about before. I got this idea from Kurt Rosenwinkel. There's this video that probably quite a few of you have seen. It's from a clinic in Dansk in Poland where Kurt Rosenwinkel is playing Body and Soul. And he's talking about a different way to use very simple chords behind a melody. And I have made videos about guy tones before, so I will link uh, to those videos in the description. If you don't know what guy tones are, you should probably watch those before you watch this. But the idea here is, of course, is that a piano player is playing the melody and can just throw in the chords with the other hand. Something that is very hard for us guitar players to do, but uh, we can simulate that and players like Ed Bickert, Lenny Bro, Lorne Lofsky, they're all Canadians for some reason, they are really good at simulating this way of playing. And so let me just repeat what guide tones are real quick. And bear with me if you already know this stuff. If I'm playing the melody, I can play the guide tones like that. And somebody asked me, by the way, how am I picking, if I'm playing with a pick, and I haven't really thought too much about that. I guess using the fingers have never been a problem for me because I'm, I'm used to playing classical guitars and stuff like that. So I guess I'm picking the notes with pick and fingers, like hybrid picking, but I don't have a system for it. I've never thought too much about hybrid picking. It's just something that I guess happens naturally when I'm playing. So I'm grabbing them like with a pick and my index finger in this case. Sorry, my middle finger. So before I get to the Kurt Rosenwinkel concept, there is a little bit of an issue here, which is that the guy tones, of course, are the third and the seventh. We have the chord tones, and then we have the guide tones, and then on top of everything we have extensions, the ninth, the eleventh, or the thirteenth. And when you look at older tunes like Autumn Leaves or any jazz standard pretty much, a lot of times the, the melody note is a guide tone. It's it's oftentimes it is the third or the seventh, which means that it's kind of redundant to play the guy tones in the voicing. When you compare those kinds of tunes with more modern tunes, like let's take a tune like Blue and Green. You have extensions in the melody which makes it, which calls for bigger chords where you can throw in all these fancy extensions. Right? So when you have a tune like Autumn Leaves, it is a functional harmony going on, right? There's a subdominant to a dominant to a tonic to subdominant. It's a two, five, one kind of harmony. And the guide tones are guiding us through So what Kurt Rosenwinkel is suggesting in that video, as far as I understand, is that you can also, instead of playing guide tones, you can play the root and the seventh, or the fifth and the third. And I, it, I remember watching this video and it kind of threw me off because it goes against what you've been told in music school, right? It's always always play the third and seventh. The third and seventh is super important and blah, blah, blah. 
and he's suggesting something else. And also, they often tell you in music school that don't play the root. Oh, the bass player hates hates it when you play the root. And uh, Kurt Rosen, we could say, play the root. But uh, I think what they mean is like when you're playing a whole bunch of bass lines, especially if you're a piano player, that interferes with what the bass player is doing. If I play the root up here, that's not gonna interfere with the bass player. So anyway, I digress. So the, the root and the seventh of those chords, autumn leaves, will sound like this. Of course, the G minor could be other things, could be G minor six. G minor, major seven even. It's surprising how great that sounds, I think. it's, And I've talked about that before too, like sometimes all you need is the root. Ah. There's this paradox that we think that because in jazz we can play all these big chords and fancy chords with extensions and crazy dissonances and stuff, that we think that in order to play jazz we have to play that all the time. But no, uh, oftentimes the right answer is the most simple answer. So just a root and a seventh, because the, the melody note in the, is the third, right? So, this gives you us all the important notes, the C, the B-flat, and the E-flat. It's also an interesting sound, it's a very spread out sound. Another tune that it is great uh, for that is All the Things You Are. Those are all thirds, right? So if we add, if we apply the Kurt Rosenwinkel idea, we get very, we get all we need. Sorry, I digress. See how it sounds like a chord melody arrangement of that tune, but all I did was play the melody and the root and the seventh. That was it. And uh, I mean, it takes maybe a little bit of practice if you're new to this, but it's a whole lot easier than coming up with a chord melody arrangement in the style of Howard Roberts or something like that, which of course you can do and it's uh, something you should work on as well. But as I've talked about before, sometimes you're on the bandstand and somebody says, let's play Autumn Leaves. And 
why don't you start it off with a chord in uh, melody intro and you're like whoa maybe you can't just pull up a perfect chord melody arrangement for every standard in the american songbook at every time you might have so to you need to have some tricks in your sleeve to pull out and this is a great technique just the root and the seventh now the other one was the fifth and the third so autumn back to autumn leaves the fifth and the third of every chord sorry let me do that again So it sounds great, I think, but we're a little bit back to the problem we had in the beginning, which was that we're, it's redundant because we already have a third. But still, it sounds good. And it, the, it's, it's a bit ironic that it sounds more modern in my ears than playing, you know, 11ths and 9ths and what have you. Uh, Because those extensions would kind of clash with the melody, right? If I played a whole bunch of 11ths and 9ths here and the melody note is a chord tone, it's kind of weird, even though you can do it, but you don't need to. Uh, this way of simplifying makes it sound more open and... Some of these sixths, I guess it's a sixth, right? Sounds very like Kurt Rosenwinkle to me. Like if I throw in a root and make it a triad, that sounds, that's a triad, right? But it sounds like something Kurt Rosenwinkle would play in my ears. He might disagree, but like here. That's just a triad. There's no ninth or anything. There's no alteration, right? Uh, you'd be surprised that sometimes the simplest answer is the easiest answer. I re also remember one time I lifted, I heard Bill Frisell play this beautiful voicing on a standard and I just had to figure out what is that? Well, it's like such a good voicing. And so I transcribed it and it was a minor chord in root position. <laughs> But you're so, it's so unusual in jazz to hear that. You always hear, you know, or something, but a minor triad, closed position, root position uh, can be amazing. So uh, again, I digress, but uh, where was I? Okay, now that we can do all this, there is a new problem. And that is that we're doing terrible, terrible voice leading. Obviously, if I go back to the root in the seventh. That's a very, very, it's a great example of terrible voice leading. We're kind of jumping like a beginner piano player would do like chord, 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 instead of finding the the closest inversion, right? Um, and that's another question that sometimes I get asked, people ask me how, like, I don't like my own chords. It sounds old. I've played these chords before. I want to sound like Gilad Hexelman or somebody like that, Logi Lund, who has these fancy chords. And I think a lot of times that's just, this is just my take on it, but it's not that they're always playing fancy chords, even though a lot of times that is what they're doing. But it's more about voice leading. Like those types of players like Gilad Hexelman, they're really good at voice leading and they've spent a lot of time, I think, 
and I'm pretty sure that they have spent a lot of time on on that. It all comes from kind of a Mick Goodrick tradition that voice leading is what you should be focused on, not fancy. We we tend to think when we learn jazz that oh, if I only learn a whole bunch of fancy chords, like Alan Holdsworth chords or something, then that's that's the answer. But I think you have to remember voice leading is more important. It's a basic foundation of music. So a better way to voice lead would be to go something like So I took one of each. So here's the root and the seventh to the third and the fifth root and seventh third and fifth and so on so let's apply the melody now let's take that and play it an octave higher the melody or if I play the top melody note and the bass note or the lowest note at the same time and then throw in the movement it sounds like uh, more like classical music I think. This is kind of the secret, right? Like this could be an intro to, I wouldn't have a problem playing this on a concert like it's even though it's a very simple concept i'm not playing any like substitutions and uh, you know chromatic two fives and uh, reharm altered no altered chords no extensions nothing just chord tones guide tones and bass notes that's it And I think that's really effective. You could be really super fancy and throw in a counter motion. Yeah, that's, uh, I got a little too excited there. Sorry about that. Okay, so that was uh, my lesson on the Kurt Rosenwinkel technique to comp for yourself on a standard and in this case autumn leaves and as always there you will for those of you who subscribe on patreon you can uh, get the pdfs i'll write out tabs and everything for this and uh, if you have any questions let me know in the comments and uh, yeah great i shall see you next time